What's up YouTube, it's Sean here and I'm here today to give you guys a review of the DTLR collaboration with New Balance on this 990 V3 in the grayscale colorway. Today's video was sponsored by Quality. Quality, for those who haven't heard of them before, is a Montreal-based streetwear brand and they've been around since 2012 and it's a brand that I've been supporting for years now. And recently, they just launched Wave 1 of their Spring and Summer 2023 line and it includes pieces like this, which is the Wave Vest, which they offer in three different colors. So this Spring-Summer line includes a ton of pieces that are very wearable, a lot of staple pieces that pair very nicely with sneakers. So if you guys are curious about the brand and want to check them out and support them, I'll link their website, their social media, all that good stuff down below. So this right here is the DTLR New Balance 990 V3, which is nicknamed the Grayscale colorway, stylized by them as GR3YSCALE. So this pair released back on February 24th for a price of 215 US dollars for men's sizes, which is the equivalent to approximately 300 Canadian dollars. The style code for this shoe is M990DL3, and just like any other 990 V3, this pair is made in the USA. So I know there's a lot of 990 V3 fatigue going on right now, and to be fair, it's kind of warranted because New Balance has been absolutely flooding the market. But for me at least, I think this is an exception to the rule because I really like how they strayed away from those natural cream tones, and they gave us something a little bit more striking with a lot of contrast. So as the nickname of the shoe suggests, this pair is done in this grayscale look, where it ranges on the spectrum from white to black. So as we dive into the details of this shoe, starting things off with the toe box, this is covered in this light grey coloured mesh. Right above this we have this reflective silver 3M in silver, along with beneath this on the bottom as well, and then overlaid on the sides of the toe box, we have this tumbled black leather. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this light grey suede, which feels very nice and buttery to the touch, and then moving downwards, covering the mid panel of the shoe, here we have a black coloured suede, and then the top two eyelets are constructed out of a grey coloured TPU. Beneath this on the mid panel we have the New Balance N logo which is constructed out of a black leather with a backing underneath of reflective silver 3M. And then moving downwards we have a darker grey mesh and we have another silver reflective 3M layer here as well. Wrapping around the bottom of the heel we have this dark grey coloured suede and on the lateral side we have 990 branding done in silver. And above this in the middle we have this perforated nubuck with this red coloured New Balance branding and then the top of the heel is covered in another layer of reflective silver 3M and here we have made in USA branding. As far as the laces go, so they give you three different lace options. The standard default lace and the one that I really like are these flat style laces done in light grey, but they also give you a secondary black coloured lace and a third red coloured lace for some reason. I guess it matches the red emblem on the back, but for me no question the clear winner is the light grey laces. Underneath this, we have this mesh tongue, which is the same color as a toe box, but on the very top of the tongue, instead of nylon and instead of that typical waffle pattern, here we have a smooth black leather, and embossed across it, we have New Balance USA branding. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe is lined in this black colored mesh, and then as far as the insoles go, these come with your typical foam lined New Balance insoles, and this is covered in this black colored textile on the top. And then stamped on the heel we have New Balance branding along with these graphics of these gears and this is done in a combination of white and grey. So the upper of the New Balance 990 V3 sits atop this full length absorbed foam midsole which is painted primarily in white on the forefoot and a very dark grey along the heel. In addition to this we also have an end cap wedge which is this black coloured foam insert which wraps around the back end of the midsole. An end cap, for those who aren't familiar with it, is a dual density foam setup consisting of a softer EVA core surrounded by a stiffer polyurethane rim, which gives you a good balance of softness and support. And right above this, wrapping around the bottom of the heel, we have the silver colored TPU heel clip with New Balance branding in the center, and this helps to give you additional support and structure for the back end of the shoe. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, so this is your classic 990 V3 outsole. So this is constructed out of a combination of black, dark grey and light grey coloured rubber. We have that typical diamond shaped traction pattern on the forefoot along with these three horizontal grooves to give you added flexibility. And underneath the rubber we have this carbon fibre shank plate as well and this is there to help with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like most of my other 990 V3s so I personally prefer to go a half size down. 
So my feet measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, and I wear a 9.5 in most of my 990 V3s. It leaves me about a finger's width between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe, which I think is fine. And the width of the shoe is perfectly fine for me, but long story short, whatever size you normally wear from the 990 V3, whether that's half size down, or for some people true to size, just stick with that same size and you'll be fine with this pair. To give you guys a point of comparison, I also go a half size down in a lot of other New Balance silhouettes like the 992, 993, 990 V4, V5, V6, as well as some of my 550s as well. And in comparison, I stick true to size or a size 10 in other New Balance silhouettes like the 997, the 990 V2 because I find that those two models have a bit more of a narrow toe box, along with a lot of made in UK models like the 991, 1500, 1530, and also the 2002R and the 1906R, those two I also go with a size 10 as well. Moving on to the comfort, so the 990 V3 in my opinion is one of the most comfortable sneakers on the market. It gives you a good balance of softness and support, so it's one of those shoes you can wear for many hours in a day without feeling pain or fatigue in the arches of your feet. So straight out of the box, you can feel some of that softness and that step in comfort right under your foot, but it's not going to be overly soft and mushy. So there's a lot of support for your feet at the same time. And when people ask me for recommendations for shoes to go on vacation, for example, I often point them towards the 990 V3. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship, so first off, material quality I thought it was great. The combination of the suede and the leathers, I was real happy with how the overall product felt. And I thought the use of the leather was a nice change of pace compared to the more typical suede and nylon based applications seen on 990 V3s. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, the only issue I had was there was a lot of dried strings of glue around this midsole area. But aside from that, I thought the overall construction was pretty solid. The panels were cut consistently and stitched on consistently. So I really had no real issues with this pair, aside from the minor glue stains. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up and I'll show you guys how these look. Like I mentioned in the very beginning, even though there's a lot of 990 V3 fatigue going on, I was happy that DTLR gave us this colorway that didn't utilize a lot of natural cream tones. There's so many New Balances on the market that utilize that sort of color palette, so by giving us this colorway that has a bit more of a contrasty look to it, I thought it was a really nice change, and to me it was a pair I really welcomed to my collection. I think this is a very easy shoe to wear, and while the color palette of the shoe is technically kind of boring, I think the way they applied it on this 990 V3 was rather unique, and I think it stands out in its own way. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this grayscale colorway of the 990 V3. For anyone watching, did you also pick up a pair of these? Did you pass because you're a bit tired of the 990 V3, or you just weren't feeling this colorway at all? Let me know down below your thoughts and let's talk about it. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on my Instagram account at sgo8, follow my Twitter page at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thank you everyone for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.